good evening, everyone. Another Monday. You know what that means is the Plug Talk Sports live show. You guys know me, Danny Torres, usual suspect, Steven Lopez, looking sus over there. Yeah, yeah. I like that he changed, changed the color shirt. We got no more Man City Blue. He's got Man United Red. Too bad Isaac's not here for it. And we have one of my students, he's now becoming my friend, Manny Nasarato. Did I get that right? Nakarato, but close, very close. There we go. There we go. Hey, I, was, I was close. I was close. Yeah, close. So he, he'll be on the show with us tonight. He was filling in for Isaac. Manny, if you want to introduce yourself to the, the viewers, go ahead, man. This is your time to shine. Yeah, so hey, everybody. My name is Manny Nakarado. I'm the president of CCNN Live, which is our broadcasting program at Christopher Columbus High School. We do everything from broadcast news, broadcasting sports, to our morning show, to our day, uh, to our monthly shows, The Ship and the Voyage. Um, we're pretty much all over Miami, and um, we cover a lot of stuff, and I'm here to talk sports with you guys today. So let's do it. Yes, yeah, man. We're, ha we're happy to have you. Um, so as, as usual, I explained to Manny Steven, we start with our uh, what's your plug and shameless plug segment, which is sponsored by Qualified Data Systems. Uh, so let's let's get into it. Uh, Steven, we'll start off with you. What is your shameless plug? Worst thing you saw this week? My shameless plug. Um, well, my shameless plug. So I'm excited. I was excited and I was very happy to see Man City, of course, be Arsenal 5-0. Um, so I could have put it as the best thing I saw, but you know i just i just have to put it as shameless because that's arsenal bro arsenal is just absolutely shameless they're in the mud they're last place in the premier league they're 20th place like under norwich yeah, city man. bro they're they're just in the mud and it's so funny to see arsenal going through it and be as bad as they are after spending 130 million you know martin odegaard's not doing anything they got ben white who's not even playing i mean arsenal is just absolutely terrible they lost 5-0 and it's funny to see them three games, zero points. So Arsenal's just absolutely shameless. I don't think they haven't scored any goals either, right? They haven't scored a goal in three games, and they've conceded nine. Terrible. <laughs> wow. That's really terrible. <laughs> That's really bad, man. But you know what? Like, there's a, one of my coworkers, and he's from London, huge Arsenal fan. And I tell him, dude, I pray for you. You're just in your mental state and well-being every night, dude. It's hilarious. I've seen videos on on a uh, TikTok that uh, Man City was Man City fans were chanting, you know, like half our team scored on you, and then Arsenal fans chanted back, "You guys are nothing special. We lose every week." <laughs> <laughs> and for your Man, for all the clubs to be, you know, for all the fans of the club to be in the other stadium ch ch uh, chanting that, it's just this hilarious. sad. Um, yeah. Manny, what what is the worst thing you saw this week? So the worst thing I saw this week was actually something I saw on Instagram, and um, I think I might be able to pull it up here. But um, I'll let I'll let the video um, speak speak for itself. Here, let's see if we can share this. Here, there we go. There we go. I'll let the video explain itself, but I think this is pretty fun. <laughs> So that was actually right before they're supposed to fight in an MMA fight. Those two guys were set to fight um, in some um, – it was some other – not the UFC, but another um, fighting promotion. And he threw a flying knee before the fight even started and knocked them clean out. That's nuts, man. <sighs> oh, yeah, I love it. This is nuts. Where I the, hope no one shame this plug this week. Where was that? I got I to gotta get some more information on that, man. Like, who were those people? Yeah, I mean, I saw it on Barstool Sports, and I, I just I died laughing. So I thought it was completely hilarious. You didn't even I, get to the I ring. Really, <laughs> I really hope that nobody actually paid for that pay per view after that. No, yeah, I think I, I think the fans now know like like who who was gonna win that fight. That's terrible, man. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, my shameless plug is gonna be a little bit more of a somber tone. Sorry, guys. I know you guys had really too funny ones but uh for me it's gonna be everything that's happened in the last week guys uh we lost 13 marines in afghanistan by a suicide bomber um i can only imagine you know 
what those families went through, uh, you know, getting that call and news. My cousin is a, a Marine and he fought over there in, in, in that war, 20 year war. Um, and it's just sad. And, and the, the worst part is that a lot of them were our age, guys. Like a lot of them were 20, 23, our age. And just imagine that someone our age is gone just for protecting their country from a suicide bomber. And uh, it's there's not there's no words to, to express that that sorrow. And uh, for people in, in New Orleans, strike down by a Category 4 hurricane yesterday and the images coming out of there this morning were – absolutely devastating it's it's insane that the hurricane struck on the anniversary of hurricane katrina which makes it so much more like it's it's creepy it's creepy and yeah uh, it's it's bad the stuff going on so my my sister's birthday was two days ago and she always says that for her birthday every year there's always a hurricane and (laughs) it's true man every single year my sister's birthday she cannot make plans because there's a hurricane coming um so it's, it's terrible man what's going on is it's nuts yeah man it's we gotta pray for the world man there's a lot of stuff going on right now yeah. uh plug of the week best thing that you saw steven you're up we're going around the bat again um best thing i saw this week uh it's gonna be in soccer as well so there's obviously been a bunch of transfers going on um and i'm gonna stay in the premier league again everton got a really good player most people might not know him his name is Luis Diaz. He's a Colombian winger, was playing for Porto, and was a big reason why Porto made it as far as they did last year in the Champions League and was success- as successful as they were. Um, I think it was around like 30, 35 million that he went to Everton from Porto. So Colombian left winger Luis Diaz, look out for him because he's going to be starting probably almost every game in the, pre- in the Premier League this season. So really excited to watch him. Manny, you're up. What best thing you saw this week? So my best thing that I saw this week uh, is coming from last night. Um, Showtime Boxing presented us with Tyron Woodley versus Jake Paul. Uh, I watched, I stayed up and watched that pay-per-view. Um, the whole card was really good. Uh, into, and the main event, I thought Jake Paul fought Tyron Woodley very well. You know, he won almost, in my opinion, almost every round. Maybe I gave Tyron Woodley one. Jake Paul won by split decision, which I think it – it really should have been a unanimous decision. And, you know, he's Jake Paul, you know, I think has solidified himself as now a legitimate fighter after fighting a guy like Tyron Woodley with um, great striking and a lot of power. So we'll just see what boxing has in store for Jake Paul. I know it's weird that he's a YouTuber going into the boxing scene, but that's what just what boxing is now. I saw supposedly he said that next on his list is Canelo. And yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen. If, I don't think that's in his future. If he steps in the ring with an actual boxer, he's he's not gonna rem- remember that night. You know, I, I agree with you there. Go if it's a real boxer, I think he's mm-hmm. he's in trouble. Yeah, you know, like Tyron Woodley, he's he's obviously fantastic UFC fighter, great at what he did, but he was more known for you know being on the ground and fighting on the ground, not just his striking, which Tyron Woodley can do. He was good at it, and you know, showed that he he's capable, but he's just not a regular boxer like these other guys that he claims he wants to go after. So he's going to keep taking the Paul brothers are going to keep taking shots at like everybody in in the industry, see who can they, who they can pick a fight with, but it's it's not going good, man. It's not going to go good. If, if they get guys of that caliber, you know, you know how much I love this guy and I'm going to bring him up and you know who I'm going to bring up the notorious Conor McGregor. If Jake, Jake Paul has called him out. Steven, you got you gotta be honest. Like even if it was boxing, Connor will destroy him. No, of course he will. And I'm waiting for somebody to do that. I mean, I thought Tyron was gonna get to him, which I mean he he hit he got a good shot on him and you know he fell back on the ropes and I thought he was gonna go down, but he came back up. I think Tyron should have attacked him a little harder when he saw that he hit the ropes and he fell back. He kind of like you know stayed back and got a little cautious. So yeah, I, I think Tyron was a little gun shy there. In the, the whole fight, he wasn't really throwing anything, no combinations. He was just trying to pick his punches, which which I think led him to losing that fight. At some point, you just got to let it go, land something. Yeah, or, I, thought, I thought he was doing like a Floyd, you know, where he saves his energy, lets the other guy throw all his punches early, and, you know, then he gets them in the later rounds. But I don't know. I mean, I thought, I thought Tyron still looked a little fresh towards the end, like he still had some gas in the tank. Or I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Or maybe it was rigged. Ho, 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 ho. 
I yeah. haven't thought about that one, Danny. A boxing match <laughs> being rigged. Wow. <laughs> Real original. Hmm. I don't think that's happened before, man. I haven't heard of that. <laughs> Apparently, there's going to be a rematch if Tyron Woodley gets the tattoo, I love Jake Paul, on mm-hmm. his leg. So I heard, I heard about that, too, because because Tyron said he wanted the rematch, and then Jake said that he would have to get the tattoo to get the rematch. So that's nuts, man. So uh, my plug of the week is going to be Miami-related, not with sports, but Miami-related. This dude down Kendall Drive was walking his horse down the sidewalk. Legit, just walking high on his little harness, just walking down the sidewalk with his horse. And it's not like a pony or anything. This is a full-blown horse. This guy looked like uh, Secretariat, the horse uh, the horse in the movie and races and stuff like that. I was like, man, this is the most Miami thing that you ever see is people just walking a horse like this was Hialeah or, or Cuba down the street in Kendall Drive, man. That's that's hilarious, man. I've seen I've seen a couple of dudes riding their horses down like Sunset and 120 something Avenue, which that's Why horse cheaper, country. Right? Yeah, so that's that's like yeah. no like you know horse country. They even have signs of like horses. You know, watch out for people riding their horses. And I've literally been driving down Sunset and seen some dudes just riding around in their horses like they've hit. <laughs> I don't know the middle of a park. I don't know. It's it's weird. I feel but like the, the horses, best- bro, a bunch of cars around them. The best even, though, is have you seen this thing that they do? I know how to say it in Spanish called Paso Fino. Yes, yeah, the horse. Yeah, that, that's the Paso Fino horse. That they like do that trot, bro. And it looks like they're spazzing out about to go on the street. <laughs> terrible, man. Not a good not a good scenario for a horse to be riding around, <laughs> r- riding down next to a bunch of cars, bro. Like, Dai, Paso, Paso Fino in Bird Road, bro. Yeah, bro. Paso Fino in Bird Road. Put him in the rancho, bro. Put him back where he belongs. Come on. Take him off Bird Road. That's that's a domesticated. That's a that's domesticated fancy horse. Yeah, that's nuts, man. <laughs> well, let's get into let's get into the show tonight. Good show here tonight. Uh, the news, Stephen. Stephen folded. Manny, you can tell him. Don't be shy. Tell Stephen that he folded. Tell him right now <laughs> that he folded. Go ahead. Go for it. Stephen, you folded. There we go. Folded Stephen hard. folded. Hard, Manchester man. City hard. was all about Cristiano Ronaldo. Manchester City this, City that, City this. He's going to City. His his agent was talking to, to City. Pep Guardiola was like, oh, yeah, I've heard about the speculation about Cristiano coming here. And, you know, it's a great player, blah, blah, blah. And the very next day after, like, two days of negotiations or three days, whatever it was, we hear – Oh, Man City is no longer negotiating with Cristiano. He has signed with United. What? Cristiano Ronaldo is going back to Old Trafford, the theater of dreams, where he started pretty much his big name career after Sporting Lisbon. He was Manchester United, won the Champions League there uh, with Wayne Rooney, Rio Ferdinand, a, a bunch of high name players. And ever since then, United's never been the same. Now they got Cristiano back on the squad. Steven, Manny, what are you guys expecting from this Manchester United team with an added Cristiano Ronaldo? And they're in the Champions League this season. So um, with uh, I think with Man United, with the addition of Ronaldo, it's definitely going to help their attack, uh, their attack because Man United has been a very weak team um, and they've also had a very weak uh, attack. And with the adding of, uh, addition of Ronaldo, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring a, a winning culture, I think, back to Man United, and they're going to make him a contender now. You know, good leadership in Ronaldo, and they still got Pogba in there. I think they're going to be a, a good team starting next year. Steven, as a City fan, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, man. I, so you remember you called me, and you were like, you even told me, congrats on getting Ronaldo to City, all this stuff, literally congratulating me. And I, I'm, I told you, well, you know, there's nothing set in stone yet. So until I see an official report, I'm not going to be excited. And there you go. That's why you can't get excited over news and speculation and stuff. Because right in right in there, Man United heard the news and they swooped in and got them. But uh, yeah, like Manny said, man, they're going to be a much better squad. Their attack is going to be phenomenal. You know, they got a proven goal scorer in Ronaldo. Um, and I was I was messing around with a, with a United uh, fan that's a friend of mine. Telling him that he's gonna take a bunch of goals from Bruno Fernandez. Now Bruno Fernandez is gonna have like three, four goals this season. 
no one goes on the penalty spot. But uh, oh. yeah, man, United. Shout I think I think I think they're one of the three teams now competing for the title. I think it's Chelsea, City, and United going to compete yeah. for the title. I don't think Liverpool is going to be in it. Shout out, shout out to Isaac who's not on the show tonight, but. Steven, you know how much garbage Isaac was talking about Cristiano Ronaldo, saying he was a coward and all this, and memes about him on our group chat. And the very next day, this guy's like, I love CR7. This guy's God's gift to the world. And I'm like, yeah. you were just talking garbage about him 24 hours ago. That's how like most of the United fans turned out to be. You know, They're all bashing him. <laughs> and then now they're all hyped that they got him. But understandably so. It's CR7. So, But – realistically both of you guys you guys i don't know for this season or next season do you guys think they have a shot at the champions league i think they definitely got a shot with with ronaldo i mean arguably the greatest player to play soccer uh, to play the game um only compared to like messi i think ronaldo is going to be they're gonna have a uh, a better chance than they had before and maybe not this year but definitely it's in their future yeah Steven? i mean depending how long ronaldo stays there whether it be two, three seasons that he's got left in the tank there, Man U. Um, if they can turn things around defensively and in the midfield a bit, I mean, they're a good team. But Rafael Varane and Harry Maguire sound good on paper, but I saw somebody comparing them to Rio Ferdinand and Nemanja Vidic. And, like, yeah. that's, that's tough that's to beat, man. It's, you, you, can't, you can't make them that overhyped. You know, it's, a, it's going to be a solid defense, but they're not going to be, you know, a crazy team, and in terms of like defense in the midfield, you got Fred and McTominay who are absolutely terrible and or mediocre at their job. So like, it's nothing yeah. crazy. They got some good creative-minded players, but uh, I don't, I don't see them winning the Champions League. Here's here's my take on this whole situation. Uh, I think that Cristiano Ronaldo and guys, Cristiano Ronaldo is my guy. It's my favorite player, and, and me being a Real Madrid fan, I miss him to death. But look, in all reality, he's thirty. He's not. I'm not saying he's washed up or he's slowing down. He's thirty six. Uh oh. He's thirty six. Oh, oh, but but what? he's washed. What? No, he's not <laughs> washed. I don't think he's washed. Okay. I just don't think that they're gonna win the Champions League, especially with the team that PSG has assembled over there, the freaking Avengers in France. Um. It's just I think a lot of people got excited for this move because of the nostalgia and the history of Ronaldo at, at United. I think, you know, when the transfer was announced that he was going to United, everyone was just showing stuff about the nostalgia and the stuff that he's done back then. Uh, for me, and Steven, this is going to shock you, but I think his move to Juventus was a failure. I think that he didn't – I don't think he achieved at Juventus. Yeah, he won the Italian Cup and – he won Serie A, and last year, if you don't remember last year, Steven, Juventus barely even made it into a spot for the Champions League. They finished in fourth, barely made it, and I think that's that's low expectations for, for someone like Cristiano Ronaldo when he's used to winning in, in the clubs, especially at Real Madrid and, and Manchester United days. I, I just think at, at Juventus, it wasn't the right move, and it was it was a failure. Uh, you no, know, the goal for him going there was to bring a long-awaited Champions League to Juventus, which has been so desperate for the fans over there in, in, in Turin, and wasn't able to do it. And that's why I, I think it was it was it was a failure. And he gets out of there, just the way that he got out of there. The season starts, and he was just like, "I want to leave. Like, I just I don't want to be here." Usually, Ronaldo, when he has switched clubs throughout his career. He, he finishes his, a season, and in the summer when he's available, he's, he's on the move. But uh, he wasn't motivated at Juventus anymore. And the way that he exited just at the beginning of the season, he's like, yeah, hey, I want out. And tells his coach to, to bench him because he doesn't want to play or suit up again for Juventus. That move was a failure. And, again, I, I think that this move to Manchester United, yes, he just brings quality to the team and makes it better. And I think with the additions of Jaden Sancho and you got Bruno Fernandes and you still have Cavani and you got Varane now, it, it, it makes him a contender in the Premier League. But in terms of Europe, I don't know. I, I just I, I can't I can't see it. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll agree with you on that. It was definitely a fold on his part moving to Juventus because, you know, it didn't amount to much. 
as you're, you know, used to Ronaldo going everywhere, winning trophies, you know, being relevant. I mean, you know, I guess that's kind of the biggest part he missed out on, just the relevancy, because obviously in Juventus, Serie A, soccer is just not as, you know, relevant as the Premier League or as it is playing for Real Madrid. So, you know, I guess either he didn't like the competition, he didn't like how the team was playing, because, I mean, I'd rather live in Turin, Italy, than live in Manchester any day. Yeah, but, uh, sure. you know, it has, has to be the team, something was going on, like you said, you know, for him to just wake up one day, make a post on Instagram, say he's leaving, you know, tell everybody he wants out. There must have been something serious going on with the club, maybe behind the scenes that we don't know about, that he really just wanted out of the team. Now, I will tell you the information that, that I've heard um, is that Juventus literally told Cristiano Ronaldo, and because of last year, because of COVID, all of these clubs took a hit financially, they literally told Cristiano Ronaldo, we want to keep you, but we can't because we can't afford you anymore. And you need to you need to leave because we just can't afford you. We can't afford to keep paying your wages because it's gonna it's gonna really destruct our club financially. And that was really what what pushed them out. Yeah. Same thing with, with like the messy situation in Barcelona, you know? They just couldn't pay for him. And that's it's unfortunate, but that's what COVID has done to a lot of teams financially. Not PSG though. Hey, they're 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 good. Know. I don't know how they can keep paying everybody like a billion dollars. Like their their because. weekly wages must be absolutely insane. Because. They got everybody. They have everybody. They literally they have, have everybody. They have everybody. Yeah, everybody's wage is ridiculous. I mean, what the thing that does impress me though is that they had such a good transfer window off of basically free transfers. Free like transfers, the, only dude, yeah. the only dude they paid for was Hakimi, which I think they paid like 40, 50 million for him. Um, so they got yeah. Donnarumma, Wijnaldum, Messi, Sergio Ramos. Sergio Ramos, yeah. Four great players, all in free transfers. Like, that's nuts. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. Yeah, I, and again, it's just – we'll see what happens. And I'm excited to see Ronaldo debut with Manchester. It's going to be it's gonna be really nostalgic. But another transfer news, something that has been driving me absolutely mad – is that I'm still waiting, and I've been telling my dad for like the last five days now, I'm still waiting for Kylian Mbappé to sign for Real Madrid. The transfer window closes tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Talks between PSG and Real Madrid are still ongoing. Uh, it could still happen. There was a, uh, a time where Ronaldo and Fenomeno and Nasario, Ronaldo Nasario, when he, he joined uh, Inter Milan, was legit at... Transfer the state transfer window closes at midnight. The guy transferred at eleven fifty nine. Uh, stuff like that can happen. So nothing's off the table until the deadline officially closes. Uh, but PSG is playing hardball right now. PSG is making it really hard for Real Madrid um, to, to get Mbappe uh, in this in this transfer window. Um, I can tell you that. Mbappe does want to go to Real Madrid, and he advised PSG this morning to please reconsider Real Madrid's offer. Uh, but PSG's, they don't care. Look, it's a business. It, they don't care. They're holding Mbappe to against his will. You know why? Because PSG is going to milk as much money as possible of having Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe on the field for one season. They're going to milk that as much as possible, and that's why they don't want to let him go. Um I think the uh, I think Nassar, president of uh, an owner of uh, PSG, said that he was not willing to let Mbappe go for anything less than three hundred million. Uh, last offer Real Madrid made, I believe, uh, was around like five o'clock uh, Eastern time here. It was like two hundred million. Real Madrid raised it from legit one eighty to two hundred million, which is insane. Uh, and but they really want Mbappe, uh, and they. Sent uh, Alvaro Odiosola on loan to Fiorentina to be able to make space to register Mbappe onto the team. Uh, but again, PSG playing hardball. And we'll see what happens before the the deadline tomorrow. And remember in this clause, um, I think they have it at $300 million because they got Mbappe for, I believe, 135 I believe. And then there's a clause in the contract with Monaco which is where Mbappe came from to PSG, that in order for Mbappe to go to another team, PSG 
has to give Monaco 35 million to be able to sell him. So they're throwing that fee onto Real Madrid as well. They're like, hey, we're going to pay that Monaco fee for us as well uh, when you pay for him. So yeah. that's the way yeah. PSG is playing. I didn't know that. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't think he's gonna. I mean, there's a couple of days left. Supposedly, I've read a couple of reports that you know PSG declined the 200 million, and then that's it. Like it's off for now. And obviously, his contract expires come next transfer window. And PSG would just be absolute idiots to let him go for free. You know, if if they don't re-sign him into another contract and they let him go, um, you know, all power to you guys. You sign basically the best player of the next generation for free. Um, but will that happen? I doubt it. Maybe he signs a new, con- they make him sign a new contract and then you guys can buy him. Um, but I know he wants to go to Madrid. You know, everybody knows it and Bob has said it. So it's just a matter of time before he goes to Madrid. And, Annie, before you, before you, you jump in here and, and say your piece, I, I, I'm going to have to disagree with Steven here. I think that if it doesn't happen in this transfer window, which PSG are idiots if they don't let it happen this transfer window because Real Madrid is willing to pay money for Mbappe. If it happens in the summer, here's the situation. If it doesn't happen now, it will happen in the summer because Mbappe has expressed that he wants to leave and he has expressed that it is his dream to play for Real Madrid. So if it doesn't happen now, it will definitely happen in the summer and PSG will be idiots for letting him go for free. Yeah, but that's what I said. I said they were going to get him in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think he disagreed with me. Yeah. Oh. No, because you said you don't think I, – I thought you said you, that it wouldn't happen this summer. No, I'm saying I don't think it's going to happen now because there's just a couple of days yeah. left and all this going on. But, you know, it's going to happen next win- next window for sure. Yeah. Manny, go ahead. Yeah, um, when, I'm, when I'm looking at the situation here and I'm looking at Mbappe and he wants to go to Real Madrid and, you know, I don't under- really understand why if he's going to stay with PSG with – you know, Lionel Messi, Neymar, they got a stacked team. They're obviously going to be winning a lot of games. Um, I mean, I guess I could see him wanting to play for Real Madrid because it's always been a dream of his. But, I mean, leaving PSG would be leaving a, a lot on the table, a lot to be desired, especially in, in like, legacy. You know, they're going to win a lot of games. They're going to win. Um, they're great contenders to win Champions League. And, you know, he I guess he wants to go to Real Madrid and um, lead, lead his own team. Is what I think he's feeling. I, I I agree with that, and but you know who is the real winner of all this situation, right? It's not PSG, it's not Real Madrid, and it's not Mbappe. Who is it? It's, it's Michael Jordan. <laughs> Michael Jordan. It is. Do you guys know from just signing Messi, Michael Jordan, Brand Jordan sponsors PSG's jerseys. Mm. Michael Jordan, just off of Messi sales already, has profited six hundred and fifty million dollars. That's nuts. Just wow. from having Messi. Jesus. That is the real winner in my books, and that is why he is the goat. I agree with that statement. Mm-hmm. He is and the man, goat. Guy just knows business. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, so, the, the jerseys are sick. The PS jersey, oh, uh, Jordan jerseys are badass. Have you seen the shorts? No, I haven't seen shorts. The shorts almost look like the Jordan basketball shorts, but they're they're made into short soccer shorts. Nice. It's yeah. yeah PSG it's have some of the freshest jerseys around. I gotta I gotta give them that. And their warm ups too. Even their warm ups are fresh. Yeah, I like that a lot. So we're gonna change gears here. We're gonna we're gonna turn into football, specifically college football. We're talking about FIU here, season preview. Season starts on Thursday at FIU Stadium against Long Island. And we're going to go by each uh, game here on the schedule, and I want Steven and Manny to uh, give their picks on, on whether that's going to be a win or a loss for FIU, and uh, I'll say my pick as well. So let's start uh, Let's start with Thursday's game to open up the season. They're at home against the Long Island Sharks. Steven, Manny, is that a W for you for the Panthers? I hope it's a W. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it'll be a W for the Panthers. Yeah. I'm going for a W for the Panthers as well. Start the season off 1-0. and oh. They're back next weekend at home once again on Saturday, September 11th on that day that we know is very special for all of us Americans. Uh, they'll be 
hosting Texas State from the Sun Belt Conference, win or loss for FIU? Win? I mean, I haven't heard much of Texas State football, so I'd be, I'd be yeah. saying it's a win. Yeah, I, I think that I think that'll be a win for FIU too. You know, I haven't like like Stephen. I haven't heard much of Texas State football, so I think FIU has that one. Let me remind you guys: the last time we faced a Sun Belt Conference team, it was in a bowl game, uh, and it was the Camellia Bowl in Birmingham, Alabama, against Arkansas State, and we lost. Mm. So yeah. you never know, guys. I still have faith. But you know what? I'm going with a W as well. FIU 2-0 for all three of us. This is where I think all three of us will agree. Week three of the season, they're on the road facing Texas Tech. Mm-hmm. That's an L for me. Yeah, I dropped that game. Yeah. yeah that, <laughs> that's that's a big L. I mean, if if they you know begin their schedule playing, I don't know, like an FCS team and then uh what was it, a Sunbelt team, and then they come yeah. against play against these guys, they're not gonna be ready for it, man. That's an L. <laughs> they're not gonna know what hit them. Yeah, man. That's gonna hit them way too fast, way too hard. It's that's good. First loss early in the season. season. Early in the yeah. season, yeah. Tough hey, out. Manny, you have no idea. Me and Steven have me and Steven both us together at FIU, we have endured some excruciating losses. That didn't necessarily hurt us, but we both at the end of the night just sat there and we laughed and they said, eh, total mal. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, you guys still had that game over my canes, so mm-hmm. that was that was tough for me to watch. Yeah, man, sitting in, sitting in the press box for that game, that was fun. It was very fun. Me and Steven mm-hmm. had making eye contact the entire night. We're like, we this is that. actually happening. We couldn't believe it, man. Like, we couldn't say anything. You know, we couldn't cheer. So we're just looking at, like, is this really happening? And I feel like every big play. I sat in my house, my hands on my face. I didn't want to watch it anymore. It was bad. Yeah, man. It was bad. So we both, all three of us, should I say, all have FIU at 2-1. and one. They move on, continuing on the road. This is where I think we'll all be divided here. Uh, they'll face Central Michigan. What do you guys think of that one? I think I think we uh, I think FIU is going to drop that game. I think Central Michigan is they've had a they haven't uh, had an all right season last season, um, but I think yeah, Central Michigan is going to take that one. Yeah, I mean I'm pretty familiar uh, with them. That's a good football program. Um, but I'll, I'll have the I'll have FIU taking a dub on that one. You know they're trying to come back after Texas Tech. They'll be ready to hand out a beating. I think they'll catch a, a comeback dub against Central Michigan. Okay, I, I agree with you, Steven. There we go. We'll have 3-1 yeah, and Steven. 3-1 for the Panthers. Manny will have them at 2-2. Uh, two and two. Two and two. So this is where it gets a little shaky for me, too. Uh, very following week, they're on the road again. The Shula Bowl in Boca Raton against Florida Atlantic, their arch rival. That's – I don't know, man. Butch has not – Butch Davis in his career at FIU, this entering his fifth season, has not defeated FAU at all. They got Willie Taggart as coach now and Nikosi Perry as quarterback for the Owls. And they're facing a big test this upcoming weekend. They're playing the Gators in week one. So I, I have to give the L like to FIU. I, I think FI, FIU is not going to beat FAU at home. Yeah, I'll take you there on that one, Danny, too. I think uh, Nikosi Perry played for the Canes, you know, had some good seasons, uh, had a good couple games with us. Um, I think he um, he's, he fit really well at FI, FAU. And they're going to have a big test against the Gators, and they're going to come in warmed up against FIU. So I think they're, I think FIU is going to drop that game as well. Yeah, I mean, last last time FIU beat at Florida Atlantic, it was what? I think I saw a stat. I don't know if it was like 2012, 20. 20 yeah, I, no, I think it was 2016. 2016. 2016 something like that like it's 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 been a good amount of years um and i don't think that's changing for the next yeah. couple so i'll give i'll give fau another dub over the panthers in that one that's that's another one man me and steven have been witnesses to some very bad fau yeah. um yeah. killings of us i think i think you remember last year right remember last year that was really bad mm-hmm. they're a good football so, team though. fau okay so 
me and Steven will have FIU at three and two, correct? Yeah, three, three and two. Manny has them at two and three. All right, Manny's going down the rough road there with FIU. Um, oh, man, get him bull bound. <laughs> back, back at home, FIU, uh, second conference game there. They face Charlotte. For me, that's a W, and I put FIU at four and two. Uh, yeah, I'd give him the W there too. I think FIU can go in at three and three for me there. Mm, I hey, think, I think on, FIU's, going, FIU's going three and three there for me as well because I got him taking an L to Charlotte. But, Steven, come on. You know we've relatively, historic-wise, we've been very good against Charlotte. Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. Charlotte's, Charlotte's a good team. They were tough. They run the ball hard. Like, they got a good trench, guys. They're a good squad. Well, I think Steven's going to give FIU, like, three straight losses in a row after what he just said because next week we're at home and we face Western Kentucky, and that's one hell of a football team, Western Kentucky. They're they're tough. Yeah. So I got FIU dropping that one. Yeah, Western Kentucky hands it to him every year. So uh, it's not going to change, man. I got him at three and four. Yeah, I think I'm going to give him a loss there at Western Kentucky as well. All three of us giving him an L. So um, Annie and Steven are now even at three and four. I'm at four yeah. and three. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, very next week, a team that always slaps FIU around and it's on the road, and that's Marshall. Hmm. That's that's think, now. Man, I think I think they're gonna find some grit and get to Marshall and catch a dub. Try to try Where to. Where is this get, grit coming from, game. Steven? Man, the butch butch is gonna rile him up. Man, he's gonna get him in a room. He's gonna start slapping everybody's helmets around. He's gonna wake him up. They're gonna come into Marshall and catch a dub. I'm telling you, mark my words. Four and four. Okay. Four. Well, I'm gonna be four and four because I'm giving them the L. Okay. Yeah, away at Marshall. Yeah, I think I'm gonna drop him on an L there too. I think I'm at like three and five now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, three and five. Three and five. I'm not looking good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there we go. This should be a win for me. Uh we'll be back at home to play Old Dominion, who is coming off a season that they did not even play at all during COVID. Old Dominion's football program said we're just not gonna participate. So things might be a little rusty coming off in, in, into this year. So I give I give the W to FIU, make them five and four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th um, I think they lost to Dominion a couple of years ago. We were watching the game. I think they had a, a really good quarterback. Um, but, mm -hmm. yeah, if they didn't play last year, I, I I don't know what to tell you, man. They they have to be Dominion. If you don't beat a team that didn't play last year, like they didn't even practice, man. Come on. Come on. I got yeah, I think they take a win there against Dominion. Team, I uh, take a year off like that iced. That doesn't. Yeah. That's not a recipe for success. No way, man. Uh, the very next week, and Stephen knows this as well. A team that slaps us around a lot, and we're on the road to them again. And last time we played them on on the road, uh, Stephen, I don't know if you remember, it was an absolute monsoon of rain, and that is Middle Tennessee and Murfreesboro. Um, that's an L for me. Yeah. It's going to be an L for me, too. Middle Tennessee is a good team, man. They really are. Cool team. I got FIU at 5-5. Five and five. Same. Yeah, you know what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to go with Steven's logic, and I'm going to say that FIU get, uh, gets their momentum. They're oh, going to okay. win Here we off go. Old Dominion. They're going to bring it. They're going to bring it to Middle Tennessee, and they're going to they're gonna give them – they're going to get that W over there. There we go, yeah, man. They're going to get that W. Come you spoke on, to Butch man. and – Butch, Butch told you to slap the helmets. Yeah, mm -hmm. he told Butch. He told me. He told me his plan. You know, he's really confident about that game. <laughs> All right, so you got FIU at four and five. Me and Steven are both at five and five. No, he's got about four and six, right? Four and six. Was it four and six? No, four and five. Because I said that they would win Middle Tennessee. So you got him five and, and five. Yeah, you and I are five and five. Right. Yep. All right. Cool. This is where it gets difficult for me, guys, because this is where I might eliminate them from bowl contention. I'm sorry to keep them off one win, but I don't know, man. We'll be at home, but we're playing North Texas, and North Texas is not an easy team. They're not, man. They're the mean green for a reason. Those dudes are good, man. I'm giving them an L. Uh, they, got, they got one more game after that, right? After North Texas? Yeah, but it's not any easier. Who are what are the last two matchups? 
So we got North Texas at home and then on the road to Southern Miss. I mean, Southern if, Miss is not bad, dude. I mean, if from my logic, if they get a win out of one of those games, they'll make a bowl game, which is obviously, you know, the goal for them to finish, I don't know, 500 and get to a bowl game. Um, so if they can get a dub from either one of those two teams, I'd be happy and I'd be excited with the bowl game. Um, but I think they have more of a chance of beating Southern Miss than, than they do North Texas. For me, they lose both games, miss out on the bowl game, and FIU finishes the season five and seven. That's tragic, Danny. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Steven there, give uh, give FIU against Southern Mississippi um, the with the win there, and then they make a bowl. You know, yeah. give some something Butch can cheer about. Mm-hmm. But okay, let's say my scenario happens. He ends up five and seven. Do you think they put Butch on the hot seat after last year's zero and five season? And before that, I believe it was uh, six and seven. The year they beat UM was a six and seven year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so three straight losing record years. Do they put Butch on the hot seat at FIU? Uh, I don't know, man. I mean. They did finish six and seven a couple of years ago, but they made it to a bowl game that season. So you know, which they lost. Goal. Yes, you know they lost the bowl game, but they made it. They made it to the bowl game, you know. And it's it's FIU. We're tr- they're just trying to make it to the bowl game. So um, I don't I don't think they'll put Butch on the hot seat. He's done a pretty formidable job from where he's been at. I think they gave him you know a free year to let him experiment with the team and see which way it's headed. Which is why you know the zero and five happened last season. But um, I don't I don't think it'll be such a tough stretch for them. They just got to figure out the quarterback play, and they'll be good to go. I mean, FIU's got probably the best running back in their conference in Devontae Price. They got yeah. a pretty good all line still. So, you know, I'm confident in them to get a bowl game. Yeah, I think um, uh, Butch Davis, you know, he's historically been a, a great coach. Um, yeah. I think um, – I think uh, FIU, the, um, I don't think they're going to put them on the hot seat just yet. As you said, that they made a bowl game, and that's that's ultimately their goal. And they have a great running game in Devontae Price, as you said. Um, and, yeah, that's, uh, I think he had uh, four uh, rushing touchdowns last, last season, mm-hmm. which um, I think, uh, you know, I think uh, with FIU, I think Butch, uh, Butch is going to stay, and I don't think he's going to get on the hot seat. Yeah. Well, guys, yeah. let me tell you. He's never on the hot seat in my books because when I play NCAA college football on video games, FIU's winning natties every year. Yeah, I miss those, man. I miss the college football games. Got to bring, got to bring out. Bring like them back. Game. They're back. They're coming back. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying for now, you know, I got to whip out like a PS2 to play them. Yeah, and you, hey, you still have Ty Hilton on the team. <laughs> yeah, man, I think only one great. time. You, you, what, what's your favorite NFL team? My favorite NFL team? Yeah. The Miami Dolphins. <laughs> okay, respectable. Because Steven over here, or over there, is a Indianapolis Colts fan. Mm-hmm. How rough is that? Carson Wentz gone? Ooh, he's coming yeah, back, man. He's coming back. That's We're tough. Gonna... Hey. He's going to come He's gonna come back and then get carted right off the field again. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to come back, back, you know. Carson Wentz is just historically injury prone, and that's why the Eagles got rid of him. And yeah, I just don't see him being uh, successful anytime soon. Yeah, no, I'm, was, I'm, I'm trying to get the Colts to trade for Gardner Minshew. There you go. I had a petition. That's, that's a, that would be good. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, I'd take Gardner Minshew. I was very heavily insulted and disrespected that Stephen and Isaac. Even had the audacity to tell me that Carson Wentz was on the same level and same page as my light shining savior of America's football team, the Dallas Cowboys football team. They told me that Carson Wentz was on the same level as Dakota Rain Prescott. How can you tell me that? How can you tell me that he's on the no. same level as Prescott? I didn't say I didn't say Wentz was on the same level as Prescott. Prescott's a way better quarterback. Well, not way better. He's a better quarterback than Carson Wentz. I'm just <laughs> saying the Colts. I'm saying the Colts and the Cowboys are at a similar le- similar level, like team wise. You know, I'm not comparing quarterbacks. So I'm just saying from a team's per- perspective. I guarantee you, we'd whoop you. We played you. Doubt it. Bet. I doubt it. Wow. Bet, bet a lunch. I mean, what? I got to check the schedule. I'll bet a lunch in like 2024. <laughs> <laughs> When we play, 
We'll be uh, we'll be a lot older. I, you see, man, me and Steven are the type of guy. Look, we play golf with each other too. So close. Which let me show everybody. Let me show everybody what we're dealing with here. Look at this. Look at this. I'm not sure if anyone's gonna be able to see it, but look at that final score. 50 to 48, guys. I almost came in the clutch and beat Steven. Almost. I had a par. I had two pars, Steven. Par on my very last hole and a very nice shot. Yeah. I could have beaten. I could have beaten Steven. I ended up with a score of 50 and Steven with the 48, man. Me and Steven go, we go back and forth. It's very competitive when we're out there on the yeah. course. It was, it was, you know, one of my, one of my worst days on the course and I still found a way to beat Danny. So, you know, it's just how it usually is. Yeah, I, I golf a little bit too, you know. I, I go oh, yeah. out there whenever I can. Whenever I can, I can make it onto the course. But, yeah, it's it's not too good right now, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Same. Guys, let's, let's talk about the next uh, – and I, I'm going to love this topic. And sorry, Manny, I, uh, after you just said what your college football team is, <laughs> that's all I have to say. That expression right there, that face expression. Tough, man. Miami taking on the Crimson Tide, Alabama. Someone, and I believe it's in Atlanta, correct? Yeah, it's in uh, neutral territory. They better call it neutral territory my butt. <laughs> and you know everyone from Tuscaloosa is going to be riding over there. I remember when Alabama was playing Washington in the old Georgia Dome that's now you know torn down. I kid you not, I think the entire population of Tuscaloosa, I was I was spending New Year's in Atlanta. I think the entire population of Tuscaloosa moved into Atlanta, Georgia, and they were all in my hotel and I've never seen anything like it. I was in the elevator and I quietly whispered to the man standing next to me. All I said quietly was roll tide. I kid you not, it was like the birds from Finding Nemo. It was just a sea of them after their roll tide, roll tide, roll tide. I just came out of the elevator and I kept hearing everyone still saying roll tide. Like the people are insane. It's by any means, this is going to be a home game for Alabama. And I guarantee you, I'm so sorry, Manny, but they better call it ATLPD because this is going to be a third degree homicide on the Miami hurricanes. I don't care what Manny Diaz says. Come on, come on. It's going to be a homicide. Give it, give it to me. Say more. Come on. Go, go. I can say a lot more on, for your go. 12 years of mediocrity. All right, all right, all right. You got it out of your system? Did you get it out of your system? I you got, got it out of Okay. If there was any game, any game that you could play Alabama, which game would you want it to be? None. Which well, – <laughs> if you had to play Alabama on your schedule Theoret – Theoretically you speaking. <laughs> which game would you want Alabama – which game would you want to play Alabama? Would you want to play Alabama 10 games down the road or would you want to play Alabama right out the gate? Well, it, it, it wouldn't matter because you guys are on the same time lapse. You, you play Bethune-Cookman and ITT Tech at the beginning of the year. You guys think you're all bad and shit. And then you start playing the real teams towards the middle end of the season, and then you guys look like trash. All I'm saying is Bama has got a freshman quarterback, an entire freshman line. I'm just saying, you know, if there was a way that Miami can pull out this win – Bama's got an inexperienced quarterback. They got an inexperienced O line. They got Nick Saban. I get it. They got Nick Saban. Manny, Manny, save yourself some save yourself some shame here. I'm sure that there's friends and your parents are watching this. Save yourself some shame. They can throw me and my abuela onto that team under Nick Saban, and we'll still probably beat UM. <laughs> okay, fine. I hear you. I hear you. But if there was a game that I wanted to play Alabama, I want them to play. I want to play Alabama cold. At the start of the season, and you know, the Hurricanes, I, I think they have a, a a good good depth in their team. They got good receivers. Um, Derek King is a stud, in my opinion. Derek King is a stud. Um, of course, it is in every Canes fan's head. <laughs> I mean, okay, I, I'll I'll agree with Manny. I mean, it's I, I haven't thought of it that way. And yes, if you do want to play Alabama, if you are going to play Alabama, you would want to you know you know you'd want to play them week one. Um, the only problem with that is then you have to make sure your team is also ready to play week one and everyone's not rusty and everyone's, you know, got their assignments in order. Um, so, yeah, man, if Alabama's got, you know, freshmen lined up all over the offense and if they're inexperienced and they might not know what's going down, maybe UM can get to them somehow, but I'm not counting on it. Uh, I'd you like to see Miami, you know, put up a good fight, but I don't I don't think they're going to get to them, man. 
I'm uh, not saying Miami's going to take the win. I'm not saying Miami's going to win. I'm just saying, could you picture the headline? Miami rolls over tied the next morning, Sunday morning. After I mean, the game, I can, I can barely imagine it. Like, yeah, it's like faintly bit. in my mind. <laughs> faintly in my mind, but I can picture it uh, just a little bit. Just a little bit to see Nick Saban shed a tear. No, it's it's a good thing college football is on Saturday, Manny. So next day on Sunday, you can go to church and repent of your sins and do confession and all that and <laughs> tell the Lord you're sorry. And uh, you know, make sure that the, the person you're telling confession to is not Nick Saban on the other side. <laughs> Danny, you know, you do a lot of talking for a Cowboys fan. You know, you do a lot of talking <laughs> for a Cowboys fan. You know, you talk a lot. Go. Saying you're and you're a Cowboys fan, so you know. I mean, I don't don't say nothing anymore. At least we've been. At at least we've been to the playoffs. Who the Cowboys? What? When? What do you mean? Like two years ago? So? At least we've been to recent times compared to the Dolphins. That's fine. A couple years back, Dolphins made a couple years back too. What does that make a difference? Yeah. What? Like what? Two thousand. Neither neither of them won anywhere. Yeah, neither of them won anywhere. They just (laughs) made the playoffs. Hey, hey, we would have gone somewhere if Des Bryant caught caught that football. He caught the football. Okay. Yep. Yep. Danny, Danny, you were like in fifth grade when that happened, man. Come on. (laughs) I was a little poor boy in my house that cried after that moment. Come on, man. You know what's the point of making the playoffs if you don't expect to win the Super Bowl? Manny, but you know what? That's fine. You're like you're like every you're like every other Canes fan. It likes to it's all talk. It's the same ritual every year. Oh, the U is back. The U is back. The That's U fine, back. man. At least I got something to cheer about, you know? Not all pessimistic. Yeah. Danny, Danny, you should take down the the poster of Romo in the back and change Yeah, it you're talking about UN fans microphone. being toxic? You're talking He's about UNB right. fans being toxic? <laughs> He's great. Let me tell you. Fans. No, man. Get, get put him with the mic. Great. He's better at that. He's better at that than throwing footballs. Before I commentate every game, I talk to Tony and I tell him, you need to let me know what I need to say today. <laughs> yeah. I also ask him, why is Troy Aikman's eye so red before every broadcast? What's he on? <laughs> no, the, the world will never know. So, yeah, Tony would be yes. doing all that talking here. Uh, Manny, Nakarado, whatever your name is. Manny Narcotics, whatever your name is. <laughs> hey, I, I would like to be a guest back on this show again, so I won't talk anymore. <laughs> No, nah, but in in true you know plug talk sports fashion, you have to roast Danny for being a Cowboys fan. Yeah, so yep. that was that was your way in. I've gotten used to it. Yeah, I guarantee yeah. you though, the day that we actually do win the Super Bowl, I I would love to see you guys' faces. I want to know what you guys want to tell me. I want you guys to tell me congratulations. You're gonna have white hair. The Dolphins are gonna win the Super Bowl before the Cowboys. Who? The Dolphins. <laughs> Okay. The Dolphins and probably like the Jets too. Yeah. I would even put the Jets there. Mm-hmm. Dolphins, what? Dolphins, yeah. Jets, the Bengals. Cowboys? Dolphins Jets. Jets, Bengals before the yeah, Cowboys. Zach involved. Prescott's going to injure his knee again. You know, <laughs> Zach Wilson looks good. Yeah, man. And we got two up. <laughs> ah, Danny. Oh, it's Danny. Fun, man. And you are in the weakest division in the NFL. Yeah, like come on, like come on, like like you're talking all this game and you're in the weakest division in the NFL. Like it's what, so last easy year, to make yeah. it out of it. Last year, yes, but we've had very difficult teams in the in past years. Uh, you played the Eagles last year, yeah, and the Giants. Come on, you guys are just haters, which you guys are. <laughs> Pretty much. But I'm talking about your Dolphins, and we're gonna end the show on this. Them making uh, stupid moves and thinking about making stupid moves is mm-hmm. they're still thinking about getting rid of Tua Tagovailoa for getting Deshaun Watson. I was going to call him something else, but in this country, you're mm-hmm. innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> there you go. That's what Judge Judy told me at three o'clock. My abuela always puts it. That's how she knows she needs to take her pills. The, the Judge Judy comes on. I'm like, abuela, how do you know you take your pills at this time? Ah, cuando empieza the Judge Judy. That's when I get my pills. That's when you know. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I mean, um, I think the Dolphins going for Deshaun Watson really shows that uh, they don't have faith in Tua. You know, I mean, yeah, they, they've been front runners for Deshaun Watson for a while now, and they haven't really given Tua the chance yet to develop. You know, it's only his second year. Josh Allen had three years until he became like an established good quarterback with a team around him. 
But, you know, I've, I wasn't really a fan of Tua when we drafted him. I wasn't a fan of his measurables. He's small. Um, I really loved – I was a Herbert guy all the way. But when we took Tua, I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll ride with Tua. And I think it's it's stupid of us to to go for, for somebody like Deshaun Watson, especially with what Houston is asking for him. I think I read somewhere that they're asking for two first-round picks and three second-round picks for, for Deshaun Watson, which in my opinion is way too much value for anybody. Yeah, they, they, I mean, that move shouldn't shouldn't happen at all. But, I mean, this hot take right here, so long as we have two, we don't win the Super yeah, Bowl. who is this? Dude, who is that's this? that's a bit of a hot person. take right there, man. You know, two had one season. He didn't look the best, but it was on a limited, you know, limited play calls. They didn't give him the whole system. They didn't let him run everything that Fitzpatrick was running. Manny. So you can't, you can't make a full, you know – judgment and you can't you know hate on Tua and all this stuff just give him this season see what he's doing this season but in no circumstances at all do I want Deshaun Watson on the Dolphins or do I want them to give up all these picks for him or absolutely anything for him at, at this point yeah I, th- I think um yeah I don't think uh we, we should give up Tua right now I think we we need to ride with Tua and see what we have in him at least just see what we have let him develop and um, if he's not the guy that, that we need, then we have to we have to adapt and we have to find somebody else. Yep. It's not like it hasn't happened before. You know? Manny, do you happen to know who this olive oil person is that's commenting on the show? I do know who she is. Well, she's <laughs> obviously been learning a lot of football from you. I can tell. That's, that's not – that is not her. That is her husband, Waters, who probably commented on, on her account. And he hates Tua. He oh, hates you know what? You know what? I've gained a lot more respect for him right now for using his wife's account, being on a burner account. Practically. Yeah, you know, he didn't, want, he didn't want me to call him out. He didn't want me to call him out. You know, <laughs> using, but, using the burner you know, to his account. His wife. Honestly, did. that is so smart. He's he's making his wife look bad right now. He's throwing his wife under the bus. Yeah, he doesn't want himself to be known as the guy that's hating on the Dolphins because he loves the Dolphins. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't like to. Uh, doesn't like Major to respect for that guy for for throwing his wife under the bus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, 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 that's that's great. That is probably just knowing that information now. Best person has ever commented on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's great, man. There you that go. You, see, you have me on, and I bring and I, and I bring it. Yes, sir. Well, you brought mediocrity with you with your football team, but that's okay. Wow, wow. that's okay. Yeah. And what do the Cowboys bring below average? Well, anyways, <laughs> well, that was anyways. our final segment. I'm not going to throw any trivia question in there uh, today because I just don't want to. You see, Stephen gets a lot of overwhelmed at, at times when we, we throw too many topics at him at, at once that have to do with losing teams and stuff like that. So, Man, that Danny, Danny gave a, like a seven question, seven part <laughs> trivia question last time. <laughs> how to how to give us like a long response answer at the end, man? I was like, I can't even answer two of them. He's asking me seven. <laughs> it was a good question, though. You have to admit, it was a good question. A good question. We had like seventeen follow ups. I couldn't even remember them. <laughs> well, anyways, guys, Manny, thank you for being on, man. You have been formally invited to be a guest, a part of this show again. And tell Olive Oil to come back because just for him doing that, he's the GOAT. Again, <laughs> appreciate you being on the show, my brother. Steven, yeah, you're Steven. Uh, we'll see you guys next okay. week for another episode of Plug Talk. It will be our 20th and uh, 20th uh, episode with Lemon City Live, and we have a nice little surprise up our sleeves for that. Uh, so we hope you guys tune in, and we appreciate you guys watching, and hope you have a good night. Yeah, thank you for having me on, guys. Thank you so much. Of course.